Okay, regular salad, Parmesan cheese, salami, cheese. This makes it real salty and well done. <laughs> Alright, so they arrested you. They it was, well, they, they brought you guys in for the. We were up at Camp um, Fort Orr. Yeah, and now. You said you, it, you're eating, going back to the barracks, or back and forth. Yeah, and they, they once in a while they get you out in formation. They say, "Now we're going to learn um, army time, whatever that." Quick time or double no, time? No, no the double time. time. Oh, what are they called? All three hundred hours. Yeah. yeah. Military time. Military time, right? And then they back, and you know, they had nothing to do with back and forth, they just laying around. You just be sitting in the barracks. I so, so I, we, I would walk, and I tell Jimmy we go walking all around, go to the, to PX. And so, did you have like the green clothes on, the green pants? Or? Yeah, we had stupid fatigues on. But we had a little bag, okay. with civilian clothes we wore under the under our bunk. So a big weekend, July Fourth coming up, a big three day weekend. And I said, Jim, they're not going to do anything here. Let's go to Ventura. And that was like <laughs> about 400 miles away, 500. Mm, I said, well, yeah. hitchhike. So he says, how are we going to get off? Can I have some you know, a big fence all around. What color do you want? Chocolate or vanilla? I said, down by the PX where the railroad I'll cars are. They always have a couple of just freight cars lined up there. I said, we'll get behind the freight cars and jump the fence. No, they're not going to get you. How do you trouble. leave the base? They were gonna, that's what he was talking oh, about, how they're going to sneak over okay. and jump the fence. So I, I took them down. I said, see, you get behind the freight car. They can't see you. We jumped the fence. So I talked them into it. So we jumped the fence and we got on the Highway 101. And we're hitchhiking. We change into our civilian clothes. Mm -hmm. We got a ride. A couple of guys picked us up and drove us halfway down. And you know, we finally got the Ventura. We stayed there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we hitchhiked back Monday. And I said, when, when we go back, we'll jump over the fence the same way and hide behind the box cars, and then. Go by the PX and we'll go to uh, barracks. So we did that, and when we got back, nobody missed us, and they had a duty schedule. And Jimmy General was on duty schedule for night fire watch or something right. that night. <laughs> right. I said, "See, you're safe. We didn't miss anything." And so that was the first time. <laughs> What'd you do in Ventura and where'd you stay? We went down to Mrs. Maldonado's. Oh. And, um... Uh, was she expecting you or you just no. show? We had other guys other places too that were staying. No, Shh, Mary, quiet. So then we went to basic training. Eight weeks. And a basic train again. I took off. Jimmy went with me. I got caught because I was on a train duty. <laughs> so that Monday morning, the sergeant called me out. He called me Gennetti. Gennetti! He had a high voice. Gennetti! Yeah. Well, you know that all expletives come out of his mouth. Uh huh. Why were you? I said, I didn't know I was on. No one told me. No one has to tell you, you. You <laughs> read the bulletin board. I said, What bulletin board? I said, He's stupid, I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, we you effing Italian. Never mind. Yelling at me. You are going to pull the train duty. Indefinitely. You're on from now on. I go piss on. You have a bad little line, I want to see you like Tanya and rotten spaghetti face, blah, blah, blah. 
What did you do? You missed I it? I went AWOL again. You went AWOL again, but you got caught. So you By yourself? You no, I went with James. <laughs> and he didn't get caught? He yeah. wasn't on duty. <laughs> did you know he you didn't know you were on duty? He didn't care. No, I don't, I don't really care if I was on duty or not anyway. I was going to go. I was on for three days. I went in after 5.30, sick after everybody ate. I went in, washed the back room down real quick and left. Is that the way it was for you, honey? After that, they signed us up for school. When Jimmy went to a different school than I went to, but we were still on St. Louis Obispo doing all our training. And um, this time we went AWOL again. Went down to Ventura and I got caught again. So I come back Monday morning, and they were, they were just literally hundreds and thousands of people processing in and out and everything. And I get in formation early in the morning, and then a microphone. Private Gennady, report to personnel or something like that. Where's Jimmy? Jimmy never, he never, he was lucky, he was only on that one time, but he had made it come back in time. Say, my friends, did you just hear Mary? She comes down soon. Shh. You don't get ice cream because you have to play with the dog. And I get ice cream. Okay. And it's only one last time that you don't get ice cream. Okay. I get ice cream. You want ice cream for You're big enough, you know better. You want some ice cream for No, but Mary's over there. Mary, that's not nice, is it? Come That's bragging. Come with me. What's she telling? She's just left me know she had ice cream. Please don't, because she was like, she has if you don't get ice cream, I do. You have to stay down here and play with the dog. Just one last time, I'll get ice cream, and you don't. Kids. <laughs> 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 oh, Were you like that trying to No. You didn't do stuff like that? Did you have a problem with your brothers and sisters? They got beat up from my younger brother. And I had to get protection from my older brother. Okay, so. so like well, I, I never reported. I want to know how so, it was. Wait a minute, so, now. well, I will get to me in a So, they called you, and then the what did they do? I the microphone. I never went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it was so much confusion, they're going to forget what a stupid neighbor I was, a wall, or I didn't report for doing uh -huh. so. Uh, they never so then what me. happened? So you stayed in formation? No, I never went. So you kept going to the school? We went to the school, and then we got to uh, leave before we Is got... Is that when you started fainting all the time? How did you know you were going to be in trouble when they called you? Maybe they were going to give you something good. Oh, I knew I was AWOL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you missed your job or your... Yeah, okay. I was AWOL. <laughs> yeah, that was it. And then, I went and then from, the time they, from the time they put me on the train, on June 24th, I had my, you know, my leave, mm -hmm. I had my basic training, I had my school training, my regular leave, on the ship for 16 days, in Japan for 9 days, and less than 6 months I was in Korea. From the time I was a civilian, Less than six months, I was in. The, they had me in Korea, sitting on the back of a truck without a gun. <laughs> and the war's going on. Where's Jimmy? Are they his sent Jimmy, uh, else? Jimmy, he didn't get sent to. He got sent to Korea later. Mm. But, but going on the ship, that's that's the thing. You know, I was 22 years old. I was, you know, most of them were kids. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were draftees, but they were mamalooks, you know. And I knew, I, you know, because I said to myself, what am I doing here? Why, if this is a war, why isn't everyone here? Why just the poor guys like me? People were getting married so they wouldn't have to go in the army or go in the service. So that was stupid. That's not fair. 
So I resented going in, then fighting the war in Korea for what? And nobody back home knew anything? No, nobody knew it. I'm over there and you know, all this is going on and I get a letter from Joe or something. Oh yeah, I'm going to school now, I'm at Idaho State and this would happen and I'm saying, man, it's a whole different world. Uh -huh. it's just, you know, it's forgotten. You know, I still don't know what the Korean War was about while we were fighting. North Korea and the Chinese invaded South Korea. Well, Bobby told us, my brother, supposed to call him Bob, but Bobby, he said that we we did do good in that Vietnam War and we did stop the Chinese or the communists from taking over uh, they were going to have all Southeast They were going to take over the whole Southeast right. Asia. Right. No question about it. But that, the first stab was in Korea. They Korea tried it there. The, the Chinese first, the were the biggest was, opponents the we communists had. communists were trying to take over the whole world. The Chinese and the Soviets. Right, the Soviet because the Soviets were they supplying were the ammunition and the Chinese were supplying bodies. Yeah. They were trying to take over South Korea. Had we already were there? We were there. We, we had were, liberated it from Japan during World War after II. World War II. Oh, okay. So we were liberated. We had occupation well, forces. Wasn't in there Japan. something where MacArthur wanted to go on? Well, what happened? Yeah, what happened? Yeah. That was in Korea. That's what. That yeah. was in Korea. But that was before Korean War. That was in the no, no, that was no, in the no, Korean War. Korean War. Oh, okay. I thought it was in World War II. No, no. If he would have, Mike wouldn't have had to go to Korea for those months. So the they were and they wouldn't let him. They wouldn't let him do it. Mm -hmm. But they were leaving. Again, confusion. Boarding a ship. You got your big bag. You know. I know what's going to happen. I figure in my mind they're going to put you down in a hole. And then they're going to give you a job. Mary, is your ice cream on that little mm -hmm. thing? No, that's plastic. So I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get lost get getting it. on the ship. And then when everything is assigned to everybody, then I'll go back down to where I'm supposed to go. So we're walking up the gangplank, and the sergeant's leading everybody. They're going this way. I went this way and dropped my bag, and they just stayed over here. So they all left and went down, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden I hear, Private Gennady, <laughs> report to Compartment D. No way. <laughs> How big is this ship? A big troop ship. It had about 1,500 of us on there. Mm. Post the dependence up, up top side. And about five minutes later. Private Gennady, report to Compartment D, because the sergeant's responsible for his soldiers. So I'll give him one more shot. <laughs> now we have a few more minutes. And then I hear, Private Gennady, report to Compartment D. I said, okay, maybe it's time. So I pick up my bag. You're just standing there the whole time. I yeah. stand there waiting. I figure wait till everybody gets settled down. Where they all get room. assigned jobs. So I'm walking down and the, with the stupid hatches and climbing down the ladder and going down. And I'm walking on. So, hey, is it, where's, where's compartment D? I'm, and I'm, and I'm walking around with my bag. And I find compartment D and I. Is it this compartment D? Is it who are you? The private Gennady. You blah 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 blah. <laughs> Where blah 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 blah. I said, Oh, Sarge, I got lost. I I was walking around, I didn't know where to go. Get your get out of my sight, my little <laughs> Took my bag. Walked. How did you not laugh at him? I had to play dumb. So I took my bag and walked down the end and picked out a nice bunk. Situated myself there. Everybody was. How many other people are in your like? You said the sergeant was responsible. Well, how yeah, many, platoon. Like how many people? Oh, I don't remember how many guys. Are, <laughs> I never bought. How many? Is there a lot of people in compartment B? There's like 15 in a squad, and what's there? Four squads in a yeah, platoon. Like that. Okay. Four times. And then we had about 1,500 soldiers on the on the boat. Okay, mm -hmm. and that was all. There's two levels. Mm -hmm. All the level were all the dunderheads like us. 
all the soldiers were going to fight for the Korea. Then up in the upstairs they had all the dependents, you know, the wives of officers and whatnot. You know. mm. they, they, they had were, nice. They had all the nice cabins. And Why did all the wives go with them? Some of them went to Japan because we were going to Japan, and then from Japan we, they flew us to Korea. Mm. So. My brother was in Okinawa for a long time. So and what they, we did? They flew the missions out of Okinawa. So the boat pulled out of uh, Washington, Pier 91 or something, I can't remember. And we well, that was Seattle. You were up in Seattle yeah, with the boat. Yeah. And we were going up by the Aleutian you Islands. You never went on a boat, did you, Michael? We are going up to the Aleutian Islands by Alaska and then coming down this way to go to Japan. So the next morning, you know, everybody's sleeping in the next morning. Now everybody's got to run to their jobs. Who works in the kitchen? Who do this? Who do that? And I'm still in my boat with nothing to do. Because he didn't happen to be there. So I walk around. I walk to the galley, go eat, <laughs> go upstairs, see the dependents, and walk around upstairs on deck and look around. You know, it's just wasting time. It's on vacation. The second day out, we hit a hurricane, and that, that afternoon I was up on deck, and I see the boat was going like this, and I said, oh shit. And then the, all you can see is water all around you, and then you look way out and you see these big waves coming like this toward the ship, and then the ship is like this, you know, sailing. Oh, so, didn't you say one guy got washed overboard? One, yeah, that was the boat. The boat was gone. Oh. All of a sudden, all you can see is just water, no sky, just water coming, and it really starts to blow. So, right, everybody off deck, batting the hatches, and everybody back to their compartments. Never mind, they're all very report back to your compartments. I said, oh man. I go downstairs and they're closing the hatches so that if there's a leak, the soldiers will die, but the dependents <laughs> the water will sink. The boat won't sink. Around, but not the it's only go halfway down. So by then it really hit and all of a sudden you can feel the boat was going up and then and then the propeller was out of the water because the wave picked it up so high and you hear Durr! all of a sudden the wave would leave and the boat would come down and it'd go boom. Durr! Boom, I'm saying, oh Lord, I said, please don't let this boat break. One thing I hate to do is drown. I hated to get in that water. I was afraid of sharks and everything. Everything was gone through my mind. Four days we were at like that. Up. Nobody could do anything. Nobody could eat except me. There was wall-to-wall -wall puke from the bunks all the way to the bathroom, the floors. It, you slide it, you slid all over the floors where everybody was sick. And, and no, it was dark in there? There's no windows? No, there's, no, there's just nothing out there. So what I did, I went to the galley. The, it's the kitchen, you know, mm -hmm. where they eat, because nobody was in there, and I wasn't sick. How'd you get out your little thing? I never Basically. got out. You, I had you don't go out, the galley's under. The galley's, they have galley for the soldiers. Oh, so the galley's in another room, but it's you're another, not up with that. No, no, they have their own, the dependents have their own special place. There's a galley on each floor? So I would go in there, and nobody was in there, and I'd stay in there, and I'd talk to the cooks, and whatever, you know, I'd... I had nothing to do. Nobody had nothing to do, and I didn't want to go in there. Stunk, and so we waited that out, and then uh, they washed it. Every time they'd wash it down, and oh god, that was horrible. Then after that, they opened up, and we got in the mid ocean, and we just going. And then you know, I went up there, and all I could see is water. And water. I said, Oh my god, I never knew there was so much water in this whole world. <laughs> There's water, 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 water. You know, and I said to myself, I said, 
wonder how those old time people, you know, when they used to go out on the boat. Columbia. And they don't know where the hell they're going. It's just water all around. Where are you, where are you going? It's a wonder they even made it. They follow the stars. And yeah, they had to. Anyway, we pulled into Japan. How many days were you on this boat? 16 days. We pulled into Japan, and they took us to uh, Yokohama. And they took us to Tent City, they called it. And Tent City was where they put all of the, the, the soldiers that were getting ready to ship out to Korea. And then those guys that were coming back would go there and then they'd catch the ship and go back to the States. So we were locked up in Tent City for a few days. And then in the middle of the night, they call us and they say, okay, you're getting on a plane. And it must have been about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And they had the old C-120s, I think they called mm -hmm. them, the old transport plane. And you get in, and there's nothing in there except the ribs, and then there's a little skinny, which you sat on. Mm -hmm. It was just the metal. It was the like, plane, the body of the, the plane. The body of the plane. Mm -hmm. And you sat in between that, forget a seatbelt or nothing, you had nothing. And you sat on that little thing and you stood there. <laughs> and that thing getting ready. You know, all the soldiers on there, trucks on the bottom, and then propellers go. And the plane be going. You think it's gonna break apart. And then it starts to move and you say, oh man, this thing is never gonna get off the ground. Not with all these people and all that equipment. It got off the ground. And we landed in uh, Yokohama. No, that's Japan. No, uh... Pusan or... No, Tegu? we landed in... We landed in Seoul. We landed in Seoul. Must have been about... Six or seven o'clock. December. Cold and dark. Freezing. How did you fly over, Michael? In a jet. <laughs> In a jet? Yeah. It was like a regular airplane? No, not my first. Mm -hmm. We got off the plane. Like the ribs? All I knew was little uniforms and everything. And getting on another plane were all of the guys that were rotating. Getting yeah, out. Dirty. Who didn't shave. Carrying their rifles, and they get now they're looking out and they go, oh, you know, <laughs> oh, you guys, you know, I said, oh man, what are we in for here? <laughs> Sad, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they took us in the in the mess hall. And they gave us some cold chicken. Must have been about eleven or twelve at night. Calling cannon fodder. <laughs> right. Really. <laughs> Then they got all these two-ton trucks, you know, the, the big trucks with the side to sit on. All right, everybody up. You're going to get this go. You sit on the truck, you know, and you're sitting there, and it's, it must be about 10 below zero. Freezing. No coats? No, you know, just what you had on the plane. And um, I don't know how many trucks picked us all up. And it's the middle of the night, and then all you hear is boom, 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 and you're sitting in that truck and you see, oh man, no helmet or nothing, you know, because they didn't issue anything, just getting off the plane, and the trucks are going along, and it's dark. And you're hearing all these explosions and the machine guns and gunfire. Ta -ta 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 Boom. And by then, I got a little concerned. <laughs> so the sergeant sitting over in the corner, and I'm in the middle, and I made myself as small as possible, bending down. And then I, 
I asked that question, I told him, you know. Say, Sarge, I said, are you going to give us a gun? I got a gun. <laughs> he looks at me and says, well, what the fuck are you going to shoot at? <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> I figured, well, I don't know, I feel better just holding a gun. <laughs> we must have traveled for about an hour and a half in that cold, cold wind. And they dropped us off in the middle of nowhere, up above Seoul. I didn't know where we were, and you're hearing all this noise, and you don't know who's shooting at who, or what's happening. You know, you're concerned, you're saying, well, what am I doing here? Who am I going to shoot? What am I, you know? And that's the way it went. It went like that for about two months, maybe three months. Moving, moving, till we got right near the, uh, the DMZ. Mm -hmm. And then before that, we were occupying different buildings. And then when we got right up near the DMZ, we made camp, tent. And then when we made camp, that's when the, the uh, sergeant came up and asked, is there anybody could type? Yeah, man, I could type. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Get me up in that headquarters, I can type 120 words a minute. <laughs> so I went to headquarters and I never looked back. <laughs> Those poor guys, and, and they used to come back, and we, guys used to come in from the front, front lines, maybe 20, 25 days in the mud and snow and whatnot. And they never got combat pay unless they spent the full month. I never knew that. Uh, mm. And they spent 25 days. 25 days, some of them, and they would, they would never get combat pay. That sucks. And I was in the, in the, the zone, what they called it, combat zone. So you're getting it? And I was I getting the the hazardous pay or whatever they called yeah. it. Extra twenty dollars. Hazardous duty pay. Hazardous yeah. duty pay. And I was as comfortable and well, I was happy. Man. So they give you coats finally? Yeah, but they gave you these big brown overcoats. We never had winter gear. They're like not that. in there, honey. You left them out here. We never had winter gear like they had. Today. Well, you had that. Remember that one jacket? We had you old had? World War Two stuff. Yeah, he had one. It, I remember. Remember, I tried wearing it. It was the itchiest damn thing. It was the warmest. You had to wear like I layers. I could. Well, it was like it was rat hair. Yeah. It had a layer of this. Yeah, I, I don't know what wool, it was. Wool. wool. I was. Uh, I couldn't. It know. wasn't even woven wool though. It was like raw. Virgin. Oh, it was horrible. You used to wear it. I wore it sometimes because it was the warmest damn coat wow. in the world, and I thought it was cool because that was my dad's army war coat. This one was in the war. <laughs> But you I really the dog in his crate then, Sam? Mm -hmm. I really Shh. 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 You would have probably been even more resentful had you been there. Um, Vietnam? Vietnam. I don't know, Shelly. We lost more people in Korea. The we amount of time, time they lost a lot more. In that short time. In three years, they lost 30,000. They lost 30, 50 in 30, 12 years. 35,000. Yeah. I used to see them before. Oh, man. Those battles, I remember reading some of the stuff like when the Chinese would come in. And they would outnumber like U.S. troops. 20, 30, 40, 100 to 1 sometimes. Because there's just so many of them. They just would just keep coming. What happened, they had a little rice ball, mm -hmm. the size of a softball. It was all together. I don't know how they to get it brewed or what, but it was a rice ball like this. And that's what they ate all day. They keep it in their pocket, and that's what they ate. And they laced it with uh, drugs. An opium. The Chinese. The Chinese. The Chinese. Chinese. So Chinese. They would dope them it up. It keeps them going. And they would put like they'd take it's they like had so Kim many they had so many people. What they would do is when they would go like to assault an Ameri a hill where the Americans were at, they'd put all the guys out front who were didn't some of them didn't even have rifles. 
con cannon fodder. Can they were they were literally there. They'd get them really doped up. They'd give them really heavily laced stuff, and they'd send them up the hills first. They'd start blowing the trumpets and stuff and send them up, and their whole job was to make the U.S. use up as many bullets before the regular troops hit. Yeah. And the guys, they said they'd shoot them and blow an arm off, and they'd just keep coming because they were so doped up. I, uh, one of my kids that And that was who? That's Korea? Chinese. Chinese, but that was in Korea. Yeah. One of the kids that lived on the on Shaw Street was in the army at, just before the Korean War broke out. Paulie Thompson. And uh, he was in the army in Korea. And he was there when the Chinese overran, mm -hmm. the Chinese were North yeah, Korea. Okay, cross. Right, they overran uh, the South Korea. And he said that most of them didn't have guns or anything. They'd run with sticks and hoes and knives, or whatever they could. They'd be screaming and running. It was like ants coming up the hill. The and here you have all these young kids there. They didn't know what the heck they're doing. They'd be shooting them and shooting them. He says, and when some of them did fall and lay down, the other one would just run right over the top of them, keep running. So they ran, the, the soldiers, they pulled off and ran them back. They got captured, but um, some of the guys that were on the front lines doing the, the infantry, it was horrible. So what happened to your friend? It was POW. Yeah. 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 Was he alright? I'm right? sure he didn't get treated. Yeah, he was alright. The Thompson guy, the, what you say his name is? Paul. There. And when did he get out? Uh, when they had the repatriation in yeah. the war. But they didn't treat them. But I used to see that, oh no. Mm. When I go mm. see them coming in with these young Sam kids. Sam had a kiss? 18, mm. 19. What do you say? Sam. for a kiss you said no. No! What? How dare you? What? And he asked you for a kiss, and you said no? Yeah. We can see you. Do you have underwear on? That's yes. that little brown spot back there. He's feeling cocky. I know. Stop feeling cocky. So now our guys are over there in Iraq. Yep. They'll probably be doing it again in Korea because they didn't let them do it last time. Probably have to do that one. Well, I'll see the first bush, then finish it over there. Alright. Well, he played by the rules, like we usually do. The UN mandate was. I just remember when we were in Korea. Seeing some of that stuff where uh, when they took us down to the tunnels honey? under yeah. the DMZ, I just never forget, you know, the war's supposed to be over and you go down in this tunnel and it's a mile south of the DMZ and you go way down and you're in the bedrock and then this thing opens up and there's railway tracks in it and floodlights and there's machine gun stations and there's, they have the... A mile south, Claymore. you guys are in the south? In South Korea, so here's, you know, the border, right? Uh -huh. The DMZ, it's a it's a strip wide, and the border's actually here, but south of the, the DMZ border, a mile south. That's where all you guys are? Well, we're on this side. I was stationed inside the DMZ for three months. Oh. But south of it, they had a, what, had, what they call an intercept tunnel, because we have seismograph equipment all along there because they keep digging underneath it. the North Koreans. That's, they're good at digging. Yeah. They love to dig. And they would, they'd pick up the tunnels. They'd pick up this, you know, equipment, you know, from blasting and stuff under there. They'd dig an intercept tunnel down. And so they, the one that I got to go in, you go way down and it's so deep, it's down in solid rock, down in the bedrock. And it opens up, and you, it's huge. They have railway tracks, and you could drive a big truck with an artillery piece of stuff through it. And when you went down there, 
they had a couple of guys on duty at all times, and they have the machine gun nest there behind you know, with the sandbags. They have the claymore mines set up, so if somebody ever came, nobody's going to come through because they got intercepted. What happened how, but, when they intercepted it? Would there have been people <clears throat> down there? And they well, then when they blast through, they all run and they leave. Oh. But, um, yeah, and I mean, that's a mile south, and it, you know, they're always doing crap. And I was just like, oh, this ain't right. It was a very interesting place. Don't be digging at the table. And then I remember, you were sending me pictures, remember? We sent pictures back and forth of some of the places, what it looked like then and what it looks like now. Because when I went, to, like I was first stationed in Weijangbu, Weijangbu was a big metropolis of half, over half a million people. And when you went there, Weijangbu was a joke. It was like shacks and stuff, wasn't it? It was like 30 years before. Yeah, it was all just tin shacks. When I went there, it was like, it was, it was a big city. It was Seoul. Seoul was huge. Seoul's like the fifth largest city in the world. Seoul's bigger than New York City. Ultra modern. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You said you had to go out on those things and stay out in the well, we had, that was when we, we had, I had duty both, you know, regular duty, and then when I was in the DMZ, every third night, you had every third day and every third night, they didn't coincide one after one after the other, but you had what they call night ambush, and then they also had the, the daytime patrols, and then I also, because I was a sergeant, I pulled up, I also pulled every few days, and then I get a full day off after it was called a uh, tactical operations center where I'd monitor the radios and coordinate. But then on the day patrols, you'd go out and you'd lead troops, and they have the demarcation lines in, inside the games and right in between. And you'd go up and down, you'd, you'd have a route, a sector you patrol back and forth. And North Koreans would come up and point guns at you and you swear, and they have a guy or two that can speak English. And, yeah, and, they, and you're, you have your ammunition is taped up. You have literally tape on top of electrical tape because that way somebody doesn't accidentally lose their cool. and, and cause an incident because you can't fire unless you're fired upon or unless you're given permission to. Oh, that's nice. And so, and then the night ambush sites, they have these areas where it's all the infrared equipment, ground radar, um, thermal imaging stuff where it can't go because there's deep ravines, it's heavily wooded, and so you go and you set up your ambushes on the southern side of the demarcation line, so if something comes through, because they try to send people through and they try to get people in the guard post, and back in, how was that, the 70s, they got a whole huge group across, they attacked the presidential palace and killed, like 76, 77, killed the guy's wife and a bunch of people. And so you do that. Yeah, I wasn't there until 84, 85. We lived in really little better conditions. <laughs> but they sent you there because they were mad at you because you didn't go to West Point, right? No. No. I had. When I went to West Point Prep, they got pissed at me, and they sent me to El Paso because they were mad at me. Mm -hmm. They sent me to the desert. But then, since I didn't fulfill a, my full, a full... When I was in Germany, I was slated for three years, yeah. which I couldn't. It was it didn't go nuts. So I did the West Point Prep, got out of Germany, but since I'd only served, it was just under a year, it didn't count as over a full overseas rotation. Oh. And in your... Uh, four years you have to start a full overseas rotation. I didn't do that. So it was coming up where I was going to have to go to an overseas assignment. And uh, I applied everywhere. I, I tried to put in, I put in for Turkey, which I'm glad I didn't go there. That would have been even worse. Uh, but I, well, anywhere, because I'd heard, I knew guys that had been in the Army for a while who were in my job, they said, you're 13 Foxtrot, you fire support. You're going to go to the DMZ. I spent three months in the DMZ. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Everybody in that job goes to the DMZ. 
and you hear guys, oh, uh, they're going to do this, and they're going to go there, and then Korea's going to come and hit you in your cot and do the blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't want to go with the TMZ. So, how long did you say? How long were you there? <laughs> a year. A year? Yeah. I was there for years, three months in the. My DMZ was right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. So you were in Germany and then you were... Then I was in El Paso for two years. And you were... Then I was in Korea for my last year. And you were at West Point for like a couple months? Yeah, West Point Pratt. And we just read all those letters to the senators and all that and get your appointment. And then you go. There you go. I'm glad I didn't go. You'd have had a lot of fun hitting all those different wars. I'd have, I'd have owed seven years afterwards as an officer mm -hmm. and been an engineer major. That's what killed it for me. I was like, I, I, you know how much I hated math. I hated math. And they were like, that, it wasn't like, like when I took Sam, we went to the Naval Academy on a trip, this field trip. They had all kinds of majors they do there. They told us, you, you are an engineer major. It was just math, 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 math. And I hate math. Okay, and you couldn't do it? I didn't want to do it. I hated it. That's the only thing they wouldn't let you do, huh? Well, that's what they told us. They said you would be in West Point and you know, you're a major. And that, all of our West Point prep studies was mostly math. And I just, I hated it. And it was more fun at Pet Lines City. Yeah. 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 But I was. <laughs> I did good. I mean, they made me a squad leader and stuff there, so it wasn't like I was a goof off. You know? Yeah. But I just didn't want to. You know, you could have married an army officer. Well, I wouldn't sure do that. I would have never married him. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh -huh. Went to El Paso and then. Right he made us write all those letters to the senators. Point my son to the West Point crowd. It worked. Got me out of Germany. I'll never forget my sergeant's face when he got that letter. He had to come and tell me I'd been appointed. He thought I was like a two degrees above a retard. Because I, I remember Dad telling me, it doesn't matter when you're private, you all get promoted the same. Whether you do work, it is that. And so I acted. I'd sit there and we'd be you know, working on the, uh, the armor personnel carrier. Okay, I need you to do this now. Okay, Sarge. And I'd sit there staring at stuff and looking at it and fumbling. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't get it. And I, I used to sit there with my I'd hang my mouth open like this all the time. Wrapped <laughs> <laughs> around on purpose. I don't know. Just to look stupid. And he he, he was a nice guy too. I didn't have a bad side. And he would get frustrated. He'd let me see it, and then he'd end up doing my work. He'd fix whatever and do it. And, oh, okay. I mean, I do. I didn't not work, but a lot of stuff I just didn't want to do. It was like you in there busting your knuckles on sh stuff, you know, working on the engine. I didn't want to do that crap. Wouldn't be a grease monkey. So he would do it. <laughs> You've been appointed to what? <laughs> you sure they got the right name? <laughs> and I'd been, and then uh, not too long before that, I had all that, and then I'd had my uh, hernia surgery on top of it before that, so I'd spent like two months where I couldn't do any of the physical work. Yeah. I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to step up into the armored personnel carrier because it's a, you have to step way up and then push your weight up. And so what did you do? You didn't go in it. No, I walked around the motor pool, I'd shuffle up, shuffle back to the fairings, I'd fill up, I'd, I don't know. I don't really know what the heck I did. I didn't do a lot. I gained weight, I got fat. Remember when I came back from Germany? I had a gut. Mm -hmm. Remember, it took a few weeks that West Point Prep got me in shape quick. They made you run more? They made you run and you did. All kind of, before every meal, you had to do calisthenics and so many pull-ups, and got to shake real quick.
I mean, I don't regret it. I, I know you do, but I do. <laughs> you can imagine the way I was in high school if I went straight to college? What a waste that have been. <laughs> of your time? Of everybody's time. <laughs> that would have been a big joke. <laughs>